I invite you to take a deep breath. Imagine what is above you is a starlit night. And in this moment, all is calm, all is bright. It has been over 200 years since the debut of Silent Night, Holy Night. This hymn has become the best love worship moment for so many. Something mystical occurs as we light our candles and sing the hope of all is calm, all is bright. Peace and light for the world. Our Calm and Bright worship series will celebrate this carol's message over the entire season of Advent and highlight its call for our lives that can guide us all year long. This week, we begin with verse one. Let's speak it together with hushed voices as if there was a sleeping baby in our midst. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round young virgin, mother and child, Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Our theme this week is peace. I'm Pastor Lida. I'm Kimberly Emerson, and we welcome you to Westchester United Methodist Church, a place where everyone is welcome and all are affirmed as beloved children of God. This is a place where love works. One of the most famous stories about this beloved hymn took place in World War I. British and German soldiers on the front lines called a truce on Christmas Day. So close were the encampments from which they were fighting one another, they could hear each other in the peaceful quiet of the truce singing Silent Night, each in their own language. This prompted the soldiers to come out and meet on the battlefield without weapons. And they spent the day playing soccer and exchanging small gifts, whatever they had. Humanity is the holy infant for whom God so desires a heavenly peace. 
Is it possible to bring calm and bright to our own corners of this world? Enter this season of waiting by lighting this first candle, anticipating the light of the star that shone over Bethlehem for all to see. Advent God, we open ourselves to hear your call today to become those who not only wait, but also work for peace in our lives, our families, our communities, and our world. Fill, Fill us with, with your peace and light. Make, Make the world, world so calm and, and bright. to greet those around you or greet us with a sign of God's peace by saying the peace of Christ be with you let's try together the, the peace, peace of Christ, Christ be, be with you today we start a special time of year called Advent this is the season when we prepare for the birth of Jesus one of the great traditions is the Advent wreath with five candles <laughs> each week a different candle is lit until on Christmas Eve, we light all five candles. So let's make our hand look like an Advent wreath with the candles pointing upwards. Let's pretend to light the candle for peace as we pray together. Please repeat after me. In the silence of the night. In the silence of the night. By the stars gentle light. By the stars gentle light. Peace is born peace is born amen amen peace will be an important idea to keep in mind because guess what a baby has just been born the good news 
is that we all get to be the baby's new big sisters and big brothers. Yay! But the challenge is this. Sometimes babies laugh, sometimes babies sleep, and sometimes babies cry. Ugh. Right now, I can hear the baby is crying. Oof. Some silent night this turned out to be. But by crying, our little one is telling us that it needs something. It's up to us to figure out what that is. I wonder if we have something that might help. <gasps> what do we have here? <laughs> it's a soft baby blanket. Good job, Kimberly. I think that our baby might feel peaceful and secure wrapped up in this blanket. Okay. Let's hope the blanket helps the baby feel more peaceful. I learned that when baby bats lose their moms, veterinarians swaddle the baby bats in tiny little blankets while they feed them. It makes the baby bats feel warm and snuggly. Even baby bats feel more peaceful swaddled in a blanket. Think of something that makes you feel more peaceful. And when you think of that, use your index finger to trace a picture of it on your palm, or you could even write it on the palm of your hand. <laughs> hey, you know what? I think all of this worked. Our pretend new baby has stopped crying. The baby needed peace, and we gave it just what it needed. I love how when we bring peace to others, it makes us feel more peaceful too. One thing I know is to let sleeping babies and sleeping bats sleep peace. Know that God's love brings peace to us and to the world. Hear this word of the ages from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, chapter 9, verse 2, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, from the New Revised Standard Bible. <clears throat> the word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall arbitrate for many peoples, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, 
and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. They shall not learn war anymore. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The words of our readings from Isaiah would have been on the lips of the Jewish people of Jesus' time. The description of a king in Isaiah, a king who would bring the people out of oppression, repeats again in Luke and Matthew. While Isaiah is referring to a king of Judah in this reading, it sets up the people's understanding that peace depended on just and compassionate leaders. In Jesus' time of Caesar's Pax Romana, Roman peace, Caesar created peace by suppressing human rights. The people had a great yearning for freedom, for light, for peace. Isaiah tells us that leaders are responsible for justice and righteousness, not only for the rich and powerful, but for the poor and marginalized as well. A Prince of Peace is not simply the warm and fuzzy feelings radiating to our souls from God, but to an active, real-life peace maintained by protecting weak from oppression and providing justice and peace for everyone. During Advent, we are celebrating the hymn, Silent Night. But what does heavenly peace look like in a world where there are still over 2,000 children separated at the border by this country who have not yet been reunited with their parents? What does heavenly peace look like when a 17-year-old walking around with a semi-automatic rifle received a not guilty verdict after murdering two men and wounding another. Are we cultivating justice for the immigrant, for people of color, for women, for poor, for the LGBTQ population? Is the language our leaders use and that we use, is it bringing compassion and peace or is it bringing hate and violence? We have seen people shouting Black Lives Matter while being attacked by those shouting All Lives Matter. And with each shout, anger and fear exposes the fact that our country is mired in racism. That racism must be acknowledged, addressed, and eradicated in our government, our courtrooms, our police departments, and in all of our systems. We saw another rise in anti-Asian hate crimes early this year, which was attributed to the highly charged debates about masks, vaccinations, and the economy. And that the stereotypes about COVID that bloomed last year have had another fertile season as anti-Asian stereotypes were resurfaced by those who began them in 2020. The language of hate feeds the fears that so many have against anyone who is not like them. This hate allows us to condone the violence, the unmerited arrests, the detention camps, the criminalization of the poor and unhoused. We need to worry when it is reported that more and more Americans lack basic knowledge of the Holocaust and deny that millions of Jews were murdered. We need to worry that our nation's capital was attacked on January 6th in an effort to prevent Congress from certifying the valid results of a presidential election. Each time there is another incidence of gun violence in this country, instead of focusing on creating and implementing common sense gun laws, we get into nasty disputes on social media about whether we should be calling for prayers or action, which is kind of sadly ironic. 
How can we sing the phrase, sleep in heavenly peace, when it seems as if there is so little hope of peace in the world? In 2014, on the 100th year anniversary of the Christmas truce of 1914, Kathleen and Chris Logan of Picturewise Productions in the United Kingdom televised a candlelit service on Christmas Eve from two congregations, one in Britain and one in Germany, symbolizing the movement to peace from that day a century before. Here is an excerpt from that broadcast. A remarkable story emerged from the frontline trenches in World War I. Though accounts vary, it seems that in the week leading up to Christmas in 1914, groups of German and British soldiers began to exchange seasonal greetings, cigarettes, and songs between their trenches. The unofficial ceasefires allowed soldiers on both sides to venture out into no man's land, the stretch of land between the German and the British trenches, to collect and bury the bodies of dead soldiers. One version of events has it that the Germans began singing Still Nacht, Silent Night, on Christmas Eve. British soldiers recognizing the tune joined in. Some groups of soldiers even finished up with a game of soccer together. Actual letters from British soldiers who witnessed the truce give us a glimpse of that Christmas Eve on the Western Front 100 years ago. Here is what some of them said about what happened. The Germans started singing and lighting candles about 7.30 p.m. on Christmas Eve, and one of them challenged any one of us to go across for a bottle of wine. One of our fellows accepted the challenge and took a big cake to exchange. We came from our mouse holes and saw English advancing towards us, waving cigarette boxes, handkerchiefs, and towels. They had not rifles with them, and then we knew it could only be a greeting and that it was all right. We had a church service and sang hymns. We met the Germans midway between the trenches and wished each other a Merry Christmas. We exchanged buttons, badges, caps, etc., and we all sang songs. They gave us cigars and cigarettes and toffee, and they told us that they didn't want to fight, but had to. Some could speak English as well as we could, and some had worked in Manchester. The Germans seemed very nice chaps who were awfully sick of the war. We were able to move about the whole day of Christmas Day with absolute freedom. It was a day of peace in war. It is only a pity that it was not a decisive peace. Remembering this truth a century on isn't just about what happened then. It's about what we, God's children and followers of the Prince of Peace can do now in the midst of conflict and fear today. What can we do right now, this Christmas, to help families, our communities, our world, hang on to our humanity in the face of brutality? What can we do to continue to love one another and to care about those we don't even know while so much around us shouts at us to hate and fear and give up on the real possibilities for peace and reconciliation? How can we meaningful pray for those we call enemies today, as well as those who were enemies in 1914? The host of the special then explains what will happen in the television special. In the same way, British and German soldiers made a human connection with each other by sharing Christmas greetings and singing, we're going to connect and meet as two congregations to share a bit about who we are sing the carol Silent Night together and celebrate the good news of God's saving love coming to us as a baby on Christmas Day. As two congregations, one in Britain, one in Germany, we are saying yes to the possibility of peace in a world of conflict by sharing a Christmas Eve connection with those we once called enemy.
Even though our countries have not been in conflict for nearly 70 years, we remember that we once feared each other, even hated each other. Even so, then, as now, our congregations were full of people who loved life, longed for peace, dreamed about a better future for their families, and struggled with the challenge of how to walk faithfully with God. People just like us. Singing the hymn Silent Night is a way of shining a light on the power of reaching out across divides and getting silent enough to listen to the hopes and fears of all the years of those we tend to cast at the enemy or someone simply different for one reason or another. This story is a powerful reminder that, like that one person's invitation to come out of the mouse holes and connect face to face, we have the ability to reach out across divides and connect because we are humans with common needs. And really deep down, we all have the desire for peace for ourselves and for our children. It might just change history, if only for a day. On Christmas Eve in 1914, there was a silencing of war, if only for a day. In that silencing, we can hear the cries of the suffering of humanity and ask, is this the way out of the dark night? Or is there another way? Jesus' kingship and his might played out in an unimaginable way for those who expected something quite different in their longed for king. All shooting stops as the soldiers exit their trenches, exchange gifts, sing carols, and play a soccer game together. This is the only Christmas truce of the war, as Allied commanders subsequently forbid fraternization with orders to shoot any violators. We must do better than one night of peace. There's a company called Raw Tools, whose mission it is is to take tools of war and turn them into tools of peace. Their work is to disarm hearts, forge peace, and work for justice. They share, by using weapons to make garden tools and other hand tools, we are creating a symbol for change and we're asking you to participate. We are asking our communities to dare to use our imaginations to change our impulse. Beating swords into plowshares, spears into pruning hooks and guns into garden tools creates a dynamic shift in our investment in time and resources. If we are no longer training for war, what else could we be doing? It doesn't mean we are all to become gardeners, but it does mean we can invest in providing life-sustaining resources for our communities. Raw Tools states on their website, we do more than turn guns into garden tools. We are turning violence into peace. We are turning fear into trust through relationship, dialogue and resources, we are welcoming neighbors with loving arms rather than bearing arms. Join us. Gareth Higgins, a peace builder from Northern Ireland said, there are lots of ways to prevent violence, lots of ways to repair its consequences, lots of ways to build beloved community. In a polarized society, there may be no more effective violence prevention measure than building bridges, or at least none that are more accessible. Get to know the person who lives next door, the person you see frequently in the laundry room, the person who looks different from you, who loves differently than you do, who speaks another language, who practices a different faith. It is not necessarily easy, 
but this is the work. Perhaps this Advent and Christmas could be a time of ceasefire from our own sources of conflict. Perhaps this year, we will raise our voices in song to celebrate the birth of Christ with spirits of peace and love that transcends all barriers. And then we may all truly sleep in heavenly peace. to speak aloud or hold quiet in your hearts situations and places which need our prayers. Creating God, be with each one of us. May your spirit call us to respond to you and to bear with each other in love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God and community, holy in one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught, saying together, Our God, Holy be your name. to God the bit of chaos clouding our lives. Now the dark skies give way to beams of light illuminating our way. Move forward into God's future forgiven and free and let the people say amen. 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 Each week we will contribute to the peace and light calm and bright in the world through our support of suicide prevention programs and the LAX Food Pantry. If you wish to share your gifts and support this faith community and its work in the community, you can do it in a couple of ways. You can go to our website and click on the online giving button. You can mail a check to the church. We support the LAX Food Pantry. You can drop off your food donations to the church office, bring them to Sunday morning in person worship, or donate to the food pantry online. We also support suicide prevention programs. You can visit our website, click on the donate button, and give directly to suicide prevention. 
another way we will contribute to peace and light following bright in this community is a giving tree. A giving tree will be located in front of the church beginning December the 5th. The giving tree will be located in front of the sanctuary and you are invited to decorate it with gloves, warm hats, socks, things to keep people warm in the community. If someone is in need of warmth, they simply take what they need. A giving tree, giving warmth to those who need it, decorated with your gifts of warmth. Through our gifts and our presence, we welcome all to God's inclusive love. Go with God into this day. May the Spirit guide your way. Offer peace to all you greet. Like Christ, see God in all you meet. This peace we give the world is born.